Norwegian Cruise Line spent an eye-watering $100 million on Norwegian Spirit just before the global cruise shutdown. With cruising now back in full swing, the 75,000-ton Leo-class ship has made her return to service debut, and wow, NCL has pulled off something amazing with this ship. As you'd imagine with a $100 million price tag, this wasn't just touching up the interior spaces, it really has been totally reimagined. They've stripped the insides back to the bare metal and rebuilt nearly all of the internal spaces. I can think of only a handful of 20-year-old ships that have had such a significant mid-life investment. But having cruised on Norwegian Spirit, I think it was money well spent. To see for yourself, keep watching. Hi, I'm Chris Frame and I write maritime history books and lecture aboard cruise ships about maritime history. I also run this YouTube channel and have a podcast. If this sounds like the sort of thing you're interested in, please consider subscribing. I sailed aboard Norwegian Spirit from Lutoka, Fiji to Sydney as a guest of NCL. While NCL provided the cruise and the travel free of charge, I have not been paid to make this video. That said, I want to send a huge thanks to the team at Norwegian Cruise Line for providing the opportunity for me to share this tour with you. Okay, let's go on board. Arriving at the pier and the first thing you'll notice is the ship's new hull art. The old mermaid and dolphin design has been replaced with a turquoise wave, bringing the style of artwork in line with the newer NCL ships. We embarked at Lutoka, which doesn't have a big cruise terminal, so we boarded the ship from deck 4. The ship has three main stairways and lifts, situated forward, midships and aft. The midship stairwell reaches up through the atrium, so let's start our tour there. The ground floor of the atrium is found on deck 7, which is also the promenade deck. Norwegian Spirit has a fantastic wraparound promenade deck sheltered by the lifeboats, and it was a great place to go for a stroll, see the ports, and even watch the waves hitting the ship mid-Pacific. Back in the atrium and the guest services area is on deck 7, along with the shore excursion desk and a cruise desk, where you can book future cruises or talk to NCL about their Latitudes program. There's a lot to see and do aboard Norwegian Spirit, so to make this tour a bit easier, I've grouped the different rooms into categories. Speaking of easy, Nothing is quite as easy as hitting that subscribe button. Give it a go, I'd really appreciate it. First, places to get a drink. Easy one to start with as the Atrium Cafe is found near the guest services desk. This place offers Starbucks coffee and has a seating area with a view of the huge new screen that dominates the space. Trivia, quizzes and games are played here. And during our cruise, the 2022 FIFA World Cup final was also broadcast on the big screen. Henry's Pub is a space that existed aboard the ship prior to the refit and can be found just forward of the Atrium. There are beers from around the world, and even a gluten-free option. The pub also serves spirits, wines, and has live music at night. The bow of the ship is home to the Social Comedy Club. The Social has a bar area, and it was here that we sampled the Sail and Sustain cocktail menu, which are made using produce that would have otherwise ended up being discarded, such as overripe fruit and pastries that weren't pretty enough. The cocktail menu was interesting, and there were a few options there that I would consider ordering again, especially the Cafe Replay, which uses coffee grinds from the various cafes aboard the ship. With the casino being situated just after the social, getting a drink is easy. There are bar staff walking around to offer you a drink if you're keen to play. More drinks can be had at Magnum's, which as you might guess, is a champagne and wine bar. This space is found on Deck 8 and spills out over the atrium area with a view down the well to Deck 7. The bar has a grand piano with live music performed here at night, creating a great atmosphere. If you like to be outdoors and fancy a drink, there's plenty of choice. Spice H2O is found at the aft end of Deck 10, perfectly positioned to provide relief to parched patrons taking in the sun or swimming in the pool. The aft decks of Norwegian Spirit are terraced, which is a ship lover's delight. The added bonus here is heaps of open deck space, spanning from Deck 10 to Deck 12. Deck 10 and 11 are served by Spice H2O, while Deck 12 has its own bar, the Great Outdoors. This sheltered bar is a great place to grab a drink while enjoying the views over the terraced aft decks. Head to the middle of deck 12 to enjoy a swim, or grab a deck chair and relax by the pool with a drink from the Waves Pool Bar. Once again, there's plenty of NCL staff wandering around taking orders. This area is home to another big screen and a stage where the DJ plays tunes during the day, adding to the ambience. At the forward end of deck 12 is my favorite bar, the Spinnaker Observation Lounge. The funky central bar serves drinks to this large space that has some of the best views at sea. The giant, oversized windows are just perfect and offer a view from every vantage point. I mean, check out this view. 
Another nice feature here are the two bridge wing viewing areas on both the port and starboard sides, allowing you to see down the side of the ship. In the middle of the lounge is a stage, which is used for small scale production shows, bingo, trivia, and dancing at night to the DJ. One deck up and the beer garden is a popular outdoor bar sheltered by awnings. There's a great range of international beers here with comfy seating and superb views. Actually, this would be a great place to show off one of our latest cruise tees or hoodies, which you can find at our merch store, links in the description. Feeling peckish? Much of Deck 12 aft is occupied by the Garden Cafe. Big windows create a spacious feel here and the buffet selection is extensive. Some highlights include cook to order eggs for breakfast, build your own burger for lunch, and even scones with jam and cream for afternoon tea. Onda is Norwegian Spirit's new Italian specialty restaurant. It's located at the aft end of Deck 12 and has a striking and modern interior. The food quality here is possibly the best I've had on a cruise, with a big array of options. The service was very friendly, and although I was given the wrong main course, the error was quickly rectified so our group were able to eat together. Head back to Deck 8 to sample some sushi at Silk, which also offers a variety of Asian cuisines as well as teppanyaki. One deck down on 7 and Cagney Steakhouse was another memorable restaurant, with a variety of steaks cooked to order as well as some non-steak options for those who prefer seafood. Deck 7 is also where you'll find Le Bistro, which as the name suggests is Norwegian Spirit's French-themed restaurant. Verve Clicquot has a presence here, complementing a menu that would be comfortable at a high-end restaurant in Paris. If French cuisine is a bit too rich for your taste, the local bar and grill is home to one of the best cheeseburgers I've ever had on the ship. American-style grill food is the fare here, with a bar that serves drinks all day and well into the night. That's a lot of food, but we aren't done yet. Head amidships and take the stairs to Deck 6 to find Taste, one of Norwegian Spirit's traditional main dining rooms. It's quite petite, but has nice views of the port and starboard sides. Speaking of views, aboard Norwegian Spirit, the Crown goes to Windows Restaurant, which is also found on Deck 6. As the name suggests, this restaurant's main feature are the windows, but wow, are they huge. The view really draws you in and makes me wish more cruise ships had such large windows at the back. The menu here is varied, food quality is top-notch, and this service is very attentive. Okay, so we've had food, we've had drinks, what else is there to do? I mentioned the comedy club and the casino already, which occupy the bow of the ship. Interestingly, the main show lounge on Spirit is found at the aft. The Stardust Theatre spans both Deck 7 and Deck 8. It is a huge space with terrace seating and an upper balcony area where drinks are served. There's a big stage, excellent sightlines and great sound and light and high quality shows, including Elements, one of the best I've seen at sea. And as we cruised in December, a Christmas show that attracted a full house and a standing ovation. NCL clearly invest in their entertainment, as the shows featured illusionists, acrobatics and stunts, as well as the usual singing and dancing. Shops can be found on Deck 8, with the usual cruise ship style items from jewellery and watches to souvenirs, perfumes and clothes. This ship also has a photo gallery and an art gallery just forward of the shops. For the more active passenger, Deck 12 offers a fitness centre situated near a spa and salon which had been totally redesigned during the refit. One deck up, a jogging track circles Deck 13, while at the aft end of this deck, a basketball court and golf driving range can be enjoyed. And now the day is done, it's time to rest, so let's check out the cabins. Norwegian Spirit has a range of cabins from the ultra-luxurious suites such as this one, with separate bedroom, lounge area and a bathroom with a view. Most of the cabins are standard balconies, which is how I travelled. My room on Deck 9 was compact but comfortable, with ample storage space, twin beds that can be converted into a queen, a small couch and a balcony. The whole room has been completely redone during the refit, with new furnishings, wall coverings, carpet and tech, including USB chargers by the bed. The bathroom featured a basin, toilet and shower, which had, wait for it, a shower door. Thank goodness! All other cruise lines do this immediately. It is so much nicer than having a cold shower curtain stick to you. The height adjustable shower head was also very much appreciated and something else that all cruise ships should offer. Other cabin categories included the standard window rooms and inside cabins, some of which can accommodate up to four guests.
how crews came to an end all too fast, but not before the spectacular arrival into Sydney Harbour, marking the first time an NCL ship had been in Australia since the pandemic. As my cruise on Norwegian Spirit drew to a close, I found myself even more excited to try more NCL ships, and I am keen to experience this ship again. The refit was remarkable, with the ship looking like new, despite being built in 1998. I've sailed aboard lots of ships, including many older ships, and all of them have had refits, but I can honestly say I have never seen a refit as extensive as this. If you're keen to hear more about Norwegian Spirit, check out episode 128 of the Big Cruise Podcast, where I share my thoughts and talk to other cruisers, as well as the ship's general manager. Thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the tour, and until next time, I hope to see you on board.